All right, well, what is it, day five? Day six. I think today is day six of the Friday, Saturday. Yeah. Today's Thursday. Ottawa. Today's Thursday. Sunday, you guys Monday, count days like Tuesday, that here? Wednesday, Thursday. Day six of the convoy. Oh, okay. Okay. How many, how many days is I thought you were saying, saying what day of the week it was. No. No, no, we count by the convoy of the now. Time change nothing, nothing matters except the, West the timeline Coast. of the. That's convoy. right. We had we had BC, AD, and now AC after China. convoy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is it the FC, the Freedom Convoy, or the TC, <laughs> the Truck Convoy? It's a good question. Freedom gonna, over fear. Let's do it with the freedom. I th- I've heard, I've seen recently signs saying freedom occupation. No, oh. it's almost like an occupation. I feel like that was a sign you made. Uh no, it's no, I haven't. I can can take no credit for making any of the signs you see on the street. I know that. So, first impressions, Tabitha? Yeah, it's been so much fun. That's honestly my first impression. It's Every time I go out there, it's a party. People are just, they're dancing, they're singing, they're, they're like high-fiving each other. They're just smiling on each other. I've never walked down a street and just had so many people just like smile at me just for but, being whoa, there. Is that, is that your first impression or is that your, your constant impression? Every time you go out there, it's the same impression? Pretty much. Really? Yeah. you live here. You've, you've seen it since Friday. I have gone out every day since Friday. And um, it's always the same? So Saturday was the, you know, the day with all the crowds. And so that was definitely the most varied day. You got a lot of different elements in the, on the Saturday. So the most boisterous in many ways. But, oh, yeah. yeah. That was the day you got the most chanting um the most you know there was there were some speeches and and things like that Um, most of the time there's just music playing and there's people wandering around and waving at the truckers and the truckers will always honk for you that's uh i mean that'll be another first impression is it's loud we are on the 17th floor here in ottawa and boy (laughs) i will say working with the constant honking has been uh has been a challenge but um yeah it's not the worst thing the honking oh yeah when you've got uh I mean, noise no, canceling you, headphones. What's your first impressions, Mike? I, well, the honking you get used to pretty quick, actually. Yeah. It's like, whatever. I had a meeting with somebody that lives right by across from the Rideau Center, and it was like super loud at that intersection. But after five minutes of, of meeting, it's like you don't even, you just tune it out. So it's, in, it's more when it stops that you notice it. Right? It's like, oh, wow, there's no noise. I think, so my first impressions are, so I came in on Monday night. So a few days after you guys had seen it, right? Friday, start, Saturday, Sunday, they had like worship services and stuff here. By Monday, it was like, okay, they're, they're all figuring out they're here to stay. And, and that was, I think, legit. Like a lot of them that I talked to yesterday, when we went on the hill for a sing song, talking to some of them, like, did you count on staying here this long? They're like, no, we, we thought we'd be home on Saturday night. So they didn't really know what they were getting into themselves, which is kind of unique and I think, uh, part of the grassroots component to this. Well, this is, and this is my first impression of it. Is just, and, and I think this is what so many people across the country reacted to so positively about this yeah. was how grassroots it really was, mm-hmm. yeah. right? And, yeah. and just the fact that it was something where you could take your kids, go out on a bridge, and cheer. And and there was a sense of community mm-hmm. that we haven't had for two years. There was a sense of like, um, finally, there's other people who are thinking that there's problems here and Mm -hmm. that, you know, not that you agree on everything, but that, you know, there's concerns and something needs to be done about it. Yeah. Um, So the other thing I think that I, I thought, so two thoughts I had immediately on, on Monday night walking through what the first was, this is the prime minister's fault that this is happening. Um, He came out of the gates during the last election campaign, making this the wedge issue. And, and now people are responding to that. So it's, it is, it, the, the fault lies with him. The second was not so much a, um, uh, a sense of uncomfortability with the signage, because there's a lot of signage that clearly is offensive to, to people, certainly to Christians and the, the use of language and so on. Not, that wasn't the uncomfortability. It was more the, um, you know, we're, we're here and we're going to stay here until you do something about this. So I started to, in my own mind, wrestle with the, is, is this a Christian response to trial, to suffering, to oppression from the government, however you want to view it, um, is this a Christian response to that? Now, obviously, we believe in protest, right? We've been involved in this work for, for a decade or more, and protest is a huge part of what we do. But the, the move from protest to, you know, we jokingly said at the beginning, occupation, but to, yeah, really, where it's like a sit-in. It's like, we're here until you do what we want um, yeah. you to do. And it, you know what's funny? It, it reminded me very much of two years ago in the whole Wet'suwet'en protests. And uh, our colleague Levi and myself were in Victoria at the time, and the entire legislative buildings were blockaded. And it was a sit-in. It was like, we are staying here until the government does what we want them to do. 
And, and I, I don't know. I just, I, I wrestle with it. I'm, I'm not sure if that's a Christian way to respond. While at the same time um, supporting the right to protest and peaceful assembly and communicate to those who are in authority over us and so on. Yeah, I, I think I want to make clear just some facts about like what it actually is on the ground, just because of the different portrayals in the media. Mm-hmm. Um, the first is you talk about offensive signs. So, about one out of every five, maybe one out of every four sign is F Trudeau. Um, like th- yeah, but that- I'm not thinking just those signs. Like some signs to me were offensive. Where like I saw one sign, it was like, "God is your immunity." Right. And I'm like, well, that's ridiculous. Like, we, we all believe in medication. Like, um, you get a headache, you take an aspirin or take a Tylenol. Like, I don't know. I just find I guess my, my distinction I'm trying to make is, like, there are signs I disagree with out there 100%. Mm-hmm. But, like, it's not like, oh, there's a bunch of vulgar, blasphemous signs, other than the F Trudeau, which I, I wish that they wouldn't <clears> have those. <throat> yeah. um, so there's that. And then the other thing I just want to make it clear is, like, you can drive around downtown Ottawa. We're yeah. able to get to work every day. Mm-hmm. We actually, we had the fire alarm go off in our building mm-hmm. today and the fire truck got here in five minutes. Yeah. Um, Before you, we could make it down the stairs. I, I okay. tweeted that actually. <laughs> I, I tweeted that. Oh, did you? I never had as many likes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, it's, and, and it's not, it's not this, it, just the atmosphere out there is not a dangerous on the edge mob. Mm-hmm. It's determined. 100%, yep. but it's it's not, um, they, they are going around cleaning the streets. They are going oh, yeah. around, like the streets are cleaner than they normally are. Yeah. They're um, scraping snow. They're scraping yeah. snow. They're guarding the monuments. Like like they, they I what I'm so impressed with the people who are here is they are so determined to make this a good representation of their message yeah. mm-hmm. that they will go above and beyond. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that doesn't answer the, the, the meat yeah, of I'm your curious, question. Uh, what you guys um, think though. Yeah, okay. what about you, Colin? Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends what you mean by blockade, uh, and, and I think that's the so. So my distinction here, and I, I haven't so really to be, talked to I did, about so this, I didn't say blockade. Just to be clear, right? It was more the like we're even though people can move about, so there's a certain aspect there where it's impacting other people's lives, other yeah. fellow c- civilians. But the you know we're staying here until you do what, what yeah. we say, right? Yeah. So so two thoughts there. One is in relation to the blockade aspect of it. Like so so I have <laughs> it. I'm not, it a blockade. Well, I'm, right not, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Let him talk. I'm just saying in general. Like that's the sense that you're getting from the media, mm-hmm. right? Is that this is a blockade. This is something where they are inhibiting blocks and blocks of downtown mm-hmm. traffic, right? And we were talking about that. Like how many how many lanes of traffic is it actually where you literally can't drive down that road? Wellington. I don't know even Queen. Can you get down Queen? I haven't checked that. Uh, yeah, you can get down Queen. You can get down Queen. Yeah, but and not, so not, not, not like south, Metcalf, though. Metcalf, yeah. uh, O'Connor, Kent, and that's it. Not even O'Connor. O'Connor is clear. Yes, yeah, so you right? can get down so, O'Connor, and you can get all the way to Metcalf to Slater. Yeah, bank so, is, so bank is pretty full. Yeah, Bank, on the so, bank on the is south now side one of Slater. The lowest. Yeah. But the reality is, that I think the, ma- the vast majority of the closures are actually police closures. Like, if you want to look at it, it's like the, the bridges across into Gatineau. The Gatineau traffic has been chaotic all week. Mm-hmm. But it hasn't been because the blockade is blockading Wellington Street in front of Parliament. It's because the police have blocked off those bridges. Now, yeah, the, yeah. you could argue about the reason, but... Sure, um, we know the reason. It's so that we can get to work, right? So that tr- there is some proper traffic pattern still considering all the stuff that's well, parked on the streets. Well, nobody can go over those bridges, right? Yeah, the bridges yeah, are they, closed. But if they would let everybody pour into here, then you couldn't get down to Albert or Slater or all the other streets, right? So Yeah, but anyway, but I guess my point is that, you know, th- these these visions of, of chaos and, and of um, end times kind of, you know, camp yeah. outs down here, there's, it's <clears> just not, it, I don't think that's a reality. And so one of the stories that, that I uh, have been sharing with people is just talking to my doctor downtown here, chiropractor, <laughs> Um, and he said two-thirds of his clients have still been able to get into the building. A third stayed away just because of the media and what they were concerned about. But he said what all of them said to him yeah. was like, this is not at all what I expected based on reading the media. It's yeah. like it's calm. It's important it's open. People are going in. Um, you know, most of the non, the non um, um, chain restaurants are all open. You know, yeah. Korean food, uh, all, these, all these places. And so yeah. um, I, I think there's a, there's a level of dichotomy between those two things that's really influencing how people see yeah. this and i do want to make a distinction too between this and the situation in alberta um where and this is what oh, i was saying i haven't talked yeah. to you about this mm-hmm. so i don't know what what your thoughts are mm-hmm. but um where i do see that as categorically different because we're here in a capital wellington street is used all the time for protests yeah they close it off for remembrance day they close it off for any number of things and, and the so, march for life uh, everything yeah um, and sometimes for, for long stretches of time. And mm-hmm. so that's, that's the proper place for demonstrations like this to be yeah. happening. Yeah. So Where I, at the border like that, you're inhibiting, tra- you're inhibiting trade. I have a bit more 
questions yeah. about that. I, I, I don't know a ton about what's happening in Alberta, but I, I would say, like, I just would make the point that this is not new. This is not a novel way for people to be expressing themselves. We've had convoys in Ottawa before like this. We've had, you know, different movements camp out at Parliament Hill to demonstrate like this. Um, and, and I and I, I think, to, to Colin's point, this is the appropriate place for them to do it. This is, this is their government. It's their government that they elected um, and that is beholden to them. Mm-hmm. And I think it is appropriate for them to come and say, you need to listen to us too. Um, and they're doing it in a very peaceful way. I think it would be wrong for them to show up with weapons. I think it would be wrong to show up and, and, um, and uh, you know, ha- have a, uh, you know, a, a, something that destroys the city. But in terms of the way that they're doing it, they're, they're doing it as best as they can with a government that continues to ignore them, continues to tell lies about them, continues to disparage them. I mean, this is, you kind of brought it up. This is where it all started. It was where we yeah. decided that we could look at those unvaccinated like they were lesser humans. Mm-hmm. That is, that is, this is the aftermath of us saying no. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And causing the situation and now refusing to have any conversations with these, these individuals. Yeah. And if Trudeau came out and talked to the convoy and we still were in this situation and the convoy, you know, if the convoy shows themselves to be unreasonable with the government that will dialogue with them, I'll have a different perspective. I support it right now. I'm not claiming to support it to the end because I don't know what the end looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think just given the nature of it so far, the way that they've done it, um, I think I, I think this is a legitimate use of our freedom that we have here in Canada to express to our government what we think on these topics. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I agree with you to to a certain extent where it's a, a couple of a couple of days like they were, I think, planning, talking to them, planning to be here till Saturday night, Sunday, some of them and then going back to work. Right. Um, if they could work, that is, uh, if they could drive their trucks and cross the border and so mm-hmm. on. So so there's like there's. There's this aspect where human lives are impacted on on all sides of this, right? And right now, they have the freedom to to do this. They obviously have the time. They have the finances to to do this. Money's been raised like we haven't seen before. But there's also the the lives of everyday citizens that are impacted that might be indifferent to this, might be have a different view than them. And are those the lives you want to impact when you're negatively when you're trying to make this point? Right. Uh, so that's one a- angle. But the, again, the one I wrestle with most is, is this something as Christians that we can condone this type of activity? Uh, of course, we we would advocate for things like peace and uh, not not the use of violence and weaponry and all that kind of stuff and, and language and so on. But to just park oneself uh, somewhere and say, we're we're not moving until you do something. Now, I don't I, like I'm coming out in my mind, I'm like, I don't think you can. Like, I, I have a hard time justifying that type of political engagement. It's not the kind of political engagement that as an organization we we ever have engaged in, that type of political engagement. And I think that in my own mind, it's, I can't I can't be inconsistent because when these kind of things have happened for, for other matters that are concerning to Canadians, like um, pipelines or uh, First Nations uh, reserves, Indigenous peoples in northern Canada, uh, this has happened numerous times, like you said. And while we might be sympathetic to, to what they stand for or not, I didn't. I never supported the use of blockades and and sit-ins. Well, that's again and, where and I would so say on. this is the proper place for that kind of demonstration, that's right? right? This is this is this is the city. This is where the governor general lives. This is where the prime minister lives. And so, yeah, there's an incidental um, impact on some of the citizens around that. And I'm not defending it. I, I, I understand totally what you're what you're saying, and that's something that I've been wrestling with too. But but I also want to point out that there is something different about this protest from previous protests, like the, the truck the, the the tractors that have shown up from dairy farmers. Let's say when there's trade wars going on between yeah, Canada yeah. and the United States, this is fundamentally different because it's a constitutional crisis in some ways, right? This is a this is a point where they're saying. This change is not just a Liberal Party platform change. This is not something that the party has elect, you know, went into an election and said this is, I mean, they did, but th- th- this isn't something that you can just change um, as a government and say, well, too bad, citizens. This is something where they are violating the rule of law. They are violating fundamental rights in the Constitution. And so that's why these individuals, that's why it drummed up so much support and why, especially in response, I think, to um, the statements Trudeau is saying, is it's like we are people who live all across the country that you're not hearing from and we need you to hear 
what yeah. we're saying. I, so, I think uh, also, like, like you got to remember, this is one tool we have in our political action mm-hmm. handbook, right? Like, so it's one thing if the military shows up and and tells them to leave. What happens then? I think could could there could definitely be a non-Christian response and there could be mm-hmm. a Christian response, right? Um, but that's not the situation that we're in. Like, that's the thing is, I think you're jumping to worst case scenario at the end as opposed to what's actually happening right now, which is they're asking to speak to Prime Minister Trudeau, they are asking the government to change their policy, and they're doing it in a very peaceful, um, non-aggressive manner. Um, it, it, yes, it does impact, like, I, I just want to clarify, like, it does impact the, the people who live around here. Most businesses... Pretty much all the businesses I've seen can stay open if they choose, yeah. um, but there, but that is an it, it is an, an impact on them for sure, um, and that is the price we pay in a free and democratic society where we say we have freedom. This is a democratic society. We need to be able to express the views to our government. I, I just don't see this as something so different than the other demonstrations that have happened that we've done that we've supported. Well, sure, it's um, different because it's of its permanence, right? Like when you walk out on the street right now, it's like clearly these people are here to stay, right? We've seen it. There's tables set up, barbecues, fires, everything. Like they're camping out. They're here to stay. And I think it's interesting. You guys were, earlier were joking about what day it was, 5, 6 or whatever. Yesterday, whatever day that was of this of this protest, of this convoy, um, was the first sign that we saw of like, okay, we need to actually figure out how to communicate now to government. Like, I'm not going to say most of these people have never contacted their MP. I, I, I wouldn't know. But I would venture to say that a lot of them aren't sure how the political process works. We're getting that sense. So there, there's been no communication with, with their MPs, uh, with, with the government, prior to we're getting in our trucks, driving to Ottawa, and we're going to tell you to end the mandate. I, I think and that's overstating. I don't think we know that they haven't been writing no, no, to their we, MPs. So we, 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 um, we, we do know, know that they do know that they they, they don't seem they don't, they don't know the inner workings of politics. The memorandum of understanding. I don't blame like, them look, for that. No, we, no, I'm not right? blaming and, them for and, that. But I'm saying if your first course of action is to do this, yeah. and it, again, we we're involved in this work all the time. Yeah. But it's never in isolation of other things, right? So we're inc- we always encourage people to build relationships with their member mm-hmm. of parliament, right? We don't encourage them to go sit in front of their member of parliament's office with a sign if they've never even ever had contact with them and park there until they pass an abortion law, for yeah. example. Like we've never done that. It's always part of other things, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So here we have, uh, and I, I had this conversation even within my own family, right? I'm like, we've been w- working for 10 years trying to get people out on the streets to either educate Canadians or protest uh, against something or for something. And and those are matters of fundamental importance as well, yeah. right? Uh, matters of life and death and, and gender and sexuality and all that kind of stuff. And now it's like, I can't get in my truck and go across the border. I can't fly to see my family. Um, those are also things that we ought to do as as Christians and as citizens. We ought to do that in response to, to God. That's a part of our responsibility. But now it's when it's like, acutely impacting the things that I need and, and want and am commanded, quite frankly, to do, I'm going all out, like the kind of right right to the doorstep with my truck. Again, I don't really there. fault them for that. And, and, and I understand, I totally understand where you're coming from. But I think looking at this, instead of looking at it negatively and saying, what should they have done? What, you know, what sort of political action should they have been involved in? And that's what we as ARPA are always trying to do, is to get more people involved in grassroots action. Yeah. But what I'm seeing here is people who who were just trying to live their lives, who were just trying to do their jobs, were just trying to feed their families, yeah. and now the government got in their face, in a sense, and was interrupting their ability to do those things. Yeah. What I'm seeing here is a class conflict that's beginning, that I'm, I'm sort of seeing that emerge, mm-hmm. where it's like there's there's a problem where, where white-collar people sitting here in Ottawa, and I think we have that bias ourselves a little bit. It's very easy because we were able to work from home, to work online. We never had our jobs interrupted, really. Mm -hmm. Uh, There were some things that changed and made it really annoying, but we didn't lose any money. These individuals have had to sit home for, for periods of time. They've had to, you know, due to quarantine issues, had 14 days off of work or whatever, right? Like, uh, so there's an issue here where I, I think the, the government is not properly understanding the impact that this has had on its citizens. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and to your point about, you know, what, whether or not uh, we want to go fly or want to go visit our friends, there's an element here where it doesn't really matter what the intention of the individual is. The question is, does the government have the right to do that in the first place? Mm-hmm. And yeah. is it just? Yeah. And that's, to me, that's the problem. Yeah. So I so I understand where you're coming from, and I think I, I get a sense of walking out on the streets that these people they probably have been impacted differently than, like you said, we we have. 
Um, but when you look at, at us as Christians and seeing things through the lens of God's word, like where do we find in God's word that, you know, the level of suffering that you endure determines like how visceral your response is to it, right? Like how do we submit to God's will in this situation as well? Not, not saying we sit back and do nothing, for sure not, right? And I think it's good actually to chat about, I'm interested to hear what you guys think about um, where to from here, right? You go out there and it's like, there's a ton of energy being harnessed here. There's obviously a ton of money being raised. Where can these people uh, in this group go now um, in addition to or instead of what they're doing to actually really start making some change, yeah. right? To take that energy and focus it in other areas, pressure points, um, in respectful ways that will result in the things that they're after. Yeah, I, w- I would just say I, I don't don't wouldn't categorize this as visceral in the sense it's determined movement out there for sure. But again, it's it's one of the most respectful, polite groups that you could be in right now out there. So I determined, yes, and I and I get your point that this is an escalation of, of this is not just sitting at home and writing their MP, which I, I would think that most of them probably have done. Um, maybe not. I don't mm, think either of us we know. Don't, don't know. Um, I would also say like into your point of like other issues, I, I don't think, and, and myself included, don't view COVID as so divorced from the other issues. I, I view it as a, a progression that our society has gone down into eroding our fundamental freedoms and and, and taking more and more power onto itself um, and disregarding the way that God created us as mm-hmm. individuals with, you know, unique dignity. You know, that's the same philosophy that underlies abortion. It's the same philosophy that underlies um some of the, the gender dysphoria stuff. And, and it's the same thing that undermines, undermines COVID. And if you see a lot of the signs out there, they're about they're about reclaiming Canada. They're about the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. They're about reclaiming more than just COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it is about a lot more than that. Um, and I know I've talked to quite a few people who are COVID woke them up to political action, mm-hmm. but then they come to me wanting, okay, so what can we do about abortion now? And I, I'd like to see that. This is, is rather than being like, why are you late to political action? is how can we harness this going forward? And I think that's kind of where you're directing the conversation. What next yeah. is a very excellent question. That would be my question to the truckers. That would be my question to the convoy. What is next? Because we need a game plan. We need to, you, we need to be working uh, within the political structures that we have. This is not a revolution. This is about reclaiming Canada. Mm-hmm. I think we need to start having some serious conversations. Um, what is next for this convoy? Yeah. Well, on that note, I would say we go to commercial. We go to commercial break, and we can pick this up after. All right. Okay, that's a good idea.